Hi and welcome to another Retro Rewind and in this one we're looking at uh, what is arguably for console players at least the grandfather of um, an entire generation um, and genre of racing games and arguably uh, one of the three titles in my holy trinity, the last of them that I'm covering on um, Retro Rewind, that spawned the entire concept of sim racing being a feasible idea on console. And that is Gran Turismo, the very first one. Now, when Gran Turismo launched back in 97 on console, on PlayStation, it really was a bit of a revelation um, for a number of reasons. The car count at the time, the type of cars included from your daily drivers, and that was the real revelation. Um, lots of titles beforehand had included the likes of, you know, high-end sports cars, race cars, etc. Um, a good number had even included your more um, sporty end, the hot hatches and things like that. But nobody had really gone in for the base-level Daihatsus and that kind of stuff, and that's what Gran Turismo did. And it then gave you the option of taking those, upgrading them, and turning them into, you know, cars that were performance monsters. In some cases, the Daihatsu Midget was never a performance monster, no matter what you did to it, but that's an entirely different story. Um, looking back at Gran Turismo, it's the same as the other two titles that are considered in this trinity, you know, Toka and Colin McRae. It in no way stacks up as a simulation um, in modern terms. It really doesn't, but looked at through a contemporary lens of when it was released, it was a revelation, you know. Racing games at this time, 3D races of this time, were, to a large degree, apart from these three, something where the brakes were simply used to initiate a massive drift. You dabbed them, big drift, around the corner, and that's how you got around the corner. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that, it's great fun. But that's not what these three titles brought to the table. Um, and whilst Gran Turismo, going back and playing it, is still basically um, oversteer around a corner. You had to think a lot more about where you were braking, how long you braked for. You know, brakes became a different factor in racing titles once Gran Turismo came along, for the console again, at least. And it was just a whole lot of fun. Interestingly, going back to it, um, the... the there are some traits that have remained solid throughout the series that you see here. You know, the entire concept of taking a stock car and upgrading it, upgrading it and racing through. As far as the core of the series has gone, has only really changed for the current Gran Turismo Sport. And it's still in there, just in a watered-down degree. You know, that core remains exactly the same. The um, car PG element of collecting as many cars as you can from a hugely diverse list, that's still in here. Um, you know, and, and that piece of DNA has gone all the way through, but certain things have changed, you know. Um, this has mandatory qualifying for a start, which is quite interesting. Um, you can bypass it, but you have to actually start the qualifying before you can do that. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you know, you had free practice, you had qualifying before the races. So that's a change that we saw eroded in later titles. Every single race starts with a grid start. You're not doing any chase the rabbits here. That didn't come along until the, arguably the PS4, oh, sorry, PS3 generation. Yeah, that's not included within here. Then you've got other things that um, we've got but have done in slightly different ways. License tests, for example. Oh boy, are these a lot more interesting back in the original Gran Turismo days. For one thing, um, there's a lot less assistance with license tests on this original title. And the margins for passing are a lot tighter than they were on subsequent um, titles. And you pretty much can't do anything other than a small handful of races um, without a license. And that's even in comparison to um, the later titles. What you can achieve without getting your first license in here is very, very limited. But at its core, it's still a Gran Turismo title. And it laid that blueprint and that DNA for an awful lot of titles that followed it. You know, and the elements that were born in this game that really you see um, spread out through so many other racing titles. It 
on console and arguably on PC now that really you don't that wouldn't arguably exist without the original Gran Turismo. So it's quite good going back and playing it I and mean, having a look at it. I mean, I spent about five hours um, just revisiting the career and messing around with the arcade mode. Um, you know, the music takes you back, all of these kind of things. But does it stand up well to rose tinted glasses? Um, I've got to be honest, probably not as well as either Tocker or Colin McRae Rally did, um, because it does feel like uh, Polyphony Digital got the balancing for a large amount of the elements within the title a lot better from GT2 onwards, although I'll need to revisit GT2 to double check on that. Um, it, it does feel a bit, well, in fact, not a bit, far more grindy than I remember it being. Really, really, really is far more grindy than I remember at all. Um, and doesn't quite stack up as well as the other two do in terms of longevity and that rose-tinted factor. Um, but that's not to say I don't like it, because at the end of the day, this is a seminal work. It is a key and important piece of gaming history, certainly sim racing history from a console perspective, and it needs to be applauded for that. Um, I'm actually now quite looking forward to revisiting GT2, so I can remind myself of how much they actually refined between the two titles. So, that's been a retro rewind look at the original Gran Turismo. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe away and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye.